Always remember Krishna, but not alone, along with his associates. And being absorbed in, following in the footsteps of those associates, and always remembering, I am in Vrindavan. Then, at the time of death, just as Jad Bharat accidentally became a deer, very easily, it was not an, a point of effort, his memory took him there. So those who are absorbed in remembering Krishna and his associates in this life, easily at the time of death, then mercy will come and one will become not a deer, but an associate of Radha and Krishna, an associate of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Goloka Vrindavan. So, in this way, there are so many teachings. Now, I hope that we can hear from the lotus lips of Srila Gurudev explaining all these things. There are so many teachings in birth life. First, he realized in his half year, age, that is 50,000 years, what is he losing? No real happiness. We should not waste time. At once we should search any bona fide guru and begin Hari Bhajan. So he left his house. He was king of Bharat, Bharat Varsha, very big. But he left. No attachment. He left the attachment of his wife, children, and kingdom, everything. He went to forest. And he was doing well bhajan. But he was very attached to a deer, as you heard. He was so attached that when the deer mixed in his group and ran away in the forest with all deers, he being, became like mad, totally was remembering where he is, what will be, perhaps any tiger or any lion can eat him. And thinking in the night, death came and he was remembering that deer. And he became in next life deer. What is the purpose? If Bharat Maharaj at the dead time, he is remembering deer, he became deer, so we, we will remember Krishna and our Swajatiya, Asai Snigdha, any Prajabhasi, like Gopi, Rupmanjari, you are chanting at that time, you are thinking, remembering, Oh, we must be gopi. Must be gopi. If Bharat Maharaj became, by remembering at the time of death, and he became dear, why not others? So our Goswami, especially Rup Goswami, has given Ashtakali Leela Chinta. So that in whole life, if he will remember, then at the time of death it may be that it will come and you will do that. Gopi. In the guidance of you. So, what we are doing now? Earning money. Mostly our life is going invested in that thing. But what money will do? Will it give peace of life, happiness of life? Nothing. Nothing. So, if Bharat was attached to deer and he became deer, if anyone is attached to any girlfriend, what will be? He must be any lady next time. And he will be attached to others. So we should take leisure 
that as he left whole world, all attachment, all worldly desire, and went. But he still, he was attached to that dear child, eh? because he was, he had attended bhav, rati, premanku, so only three la life loss. But what to us? All kinds of anartha are there. Even nishtha has not come. Ruchi has not come. Who will save us? Hmm? If anyone, as he told the slow, Rahu Ganesh Tattaprasana Jati Naja Ichya Nirvapanad Grihatva Mahat Padra Jo Vishekam Mahat Guru Dev Mahat Rupa Goswami and others. If they are our saver, we think, I cannot save myself. So my Gurudev will save us. Vaishnava will save us. Then we can be <coughs> protected. Otherwise, our life will be ruined. It has been told, those who want Krishna pray, Bhagavad pray. Param, Param, Bhavasagarasya, Bhakkhano Gopi Asadhu. Remember always this. Hmm? Those who want to have Krishna praying, anyone cannot say, Mahat Padar Jogi Sekam. So, the Attachment to ladies and ladies at back attach, attach, attachment to male. Both are same. Be careful. <coughs> you are you in married life? Okay. Go on doing with your husband, family, also doing by them. But if you are brahmachari, sannyasi, be very careful. Otherwise, in the moment, Maya will come and eat you. <laughs> <coughs> so, we should remember, still there is time. We, what we have done, mistake, we should try to correct. Because when faith he will come. When he will come, we don't know. In a moment, he can come. So there are so many teachings in Bhat Maharaj. So we should try to. <clears throat> what was favorable for Bharat? He was doing. What was not favorable? You to reject very strong. We should try to do like that. Now, Bhat Maharaj. Seven. You know Prahlad Maharaj. Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Thakur. He has read Prahlad Charitra 108 times. He was Bhakta. He was Bhakta. All should follow Haridas Sattam, Pralat Maharaj. Very tall. Trinatapi Suni Chena, Tarurapi Sahisunana. Amanina, Manadena, Kirtaniya Sada. If you want to be Vaishnav, you will have to follow the life of Pralat Maharaj. Uh, Sriman. Damodar, you should begin. <coughs> you should try to listen very carefully and to follow. <coughs> Don't be attached to anyone. Attachment to Krishna. Attachment to Radha Krishna and Mahaprabhu. Om Gyan Dhamananda Sakyananda Sraka. Chaksuran Militam Jena Tasma is Shi Guruvayanama 
श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री वैद्य गिरधा शिव सदी गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई ऑफ माय मिलियंस ऑफ धन्यवाद प्रणाम्स और इस फिर गुरु पाद परमा और विष्णु पाद श्री श्रीमद भक्त जन नारायण गोस्वामी महाराज द लॉर्ड इज फिर माय शिष्य गुरु आल्सो प्रेजेंट श्री नंदी वैष्णवस Vaishnavis, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming. It's a great good fortune we get the chance to hear of the glories of Sri Pralad Maharaj. The teachings of Sri Pralad Maharaj are like a column, like a very strong foundation by which we can make a very high palace of seva to Sri Radha and Krishna. Pralad Maharaj's instructions are like a bath of cool water upon the mind. If we can follow just one drop of the teachings of Prahlad Maharaj, then our bhajan can be completely successful. Sri si Prahlad Maharaj taught that even despite achieving perfection, many, many obstacles may be there in spiritual life. But we should not leave our bhajan. We should not pray to Krishna for the removal of miseries, because miseries are there even in the lives of perfected souls, like the Pandavas. Despite the presence of many, many obstacles, many, many difficulties, Great devotees like Prahlad Maharaj and the Pandavas and the Gopis never gave up their Hari Bhajan. We can learn this from the teachings of Sri Prahlad Maharaj. Sri Prahlad Maharaj's father was an incarnation of Vijay. He took birth as Hiranyakasipu. So he was a very great demon. Even though he had many good qualities, he was against the service of Sri Vishnu. Therefore all his good qualities are about as useful as the ornament upon a dead body. Aprana seva deha sel loka eva ranjana. Hiranyakasipu performed austerities to please Lord Brahma. Hiranyakasipu had a desire to become immortal. Therefore, after such austerities, he was standing on his toes with his hands in the air. All his body had been eaten by termites, and he had become covered by the dirt of the termites. And one fire was coming from his head. Lord Brahma came and said, "I have no bother." I have never seen anyone perform austerities like you. What benediction do you want? That time here, Andi Kasipu Maharaj said, "Brahma Ji, you are like Bhagwan. Please give me the benediction of immortality." But Lord Brahma said, "Son, I don't have that in me. Then how I can give it to you? Take another benediction." So Andi Kasipu took many benedictions in one breath. I should not be killed in the daytime. Should not be killed in the nighttime. I should not be killed on the ground. Should not be killed in the air. Should not be killed inside. Should not be killed outside. Should not be killed by anything living or dead. Should not be killed by any weapons. Should not be killed in twelve months to be here. In one long breath, he asked for many, many benedictions, and Brahma said, "Tatastu, tatastu, may it be." So, Hirani Kasipu, his wife Kayadu, she had he had three children, three sons. The youngest of which was Pralad, four sons. The youngest of which was Pralad Maharaj. Sri Pralad Maharaj, when Hirani Kasipu was performing austerities in the higher planets, that time the demigods came and captured Kayadu, who was pregnant with Pralad Maharaj in the womb. They thought this is the seed of a big demon. Therefore, if we can cut the nip, if we can, how do you say? We can nip it in the bud, and we'll save ourselves a lot of trouble. They went to kill Pralad in the womb. That time, Sri Narad Muni came. Guru Maharaj says, "Who will protect us? Only the Vaishnavas will protect us." Narada Muni said to Indra Dev, "Don't kill him. He is not a demon. He is a great bhakti, a great bhakta of Lord Narayan." Therefore, Narada Muni took the wife of Hari Kasipu to his ashram, and there for sixty thousand years he spoke Hari Kata to the wife of Hari Kasipu. And Pralad Maharaj, even as a baby in the womb, for sixty thousand years he got a chance to hear instructions on the service of Krishna from the pure devotee. Therefore, when he was born, he was born like Pralad Maharaj, pure devotee. Like any father, Hirani Kasipu wanted a good education for his son. Therefore, he sent him to Gurukul. These days, our Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj said, our education system is like a slaughterhouse, because not teaching anything, only ignorance, no knowledge of the soul, nothing about what is eternal, nothing of any value. Therefore, Pralad Maharaj, even though he went to Gurukul. And hearing the materialistic instructions of his son Donamaka, Pralad Maharaj never paid any attention. He cheated them. 
And when he came back from holidays, his father, out of great affection, took young Prahladji on his lap, and with his heart melting actually, and smelling the head of Prahlad Maharaj and tears from his eyes, he asked, my dear son, what was the best thing that you learned in Gurukul? So Sri Prahlad Maharaj taught us, if we want to give instruction on Harikita, we must be Nirapeksh, completely without any self-interest. Prahlad Maharaj spoke the truth to his father, even though that truth was a little bit unpalatable for him. If we think I should flatter my audience, then I can get a nice donation, I can get this or that, this is the wrong teaching. Srila Saraswati Thakur said, if we flatter the audience just for our own benefit, we'll become atheists and derive, derail from the Vedic path. Therefore Prahlad Maharaj, very politely, but very directly, he said to his father, Tad sadhu manne asujavaja dehinam savik samatvya diyat asakrihat hitvatpa patam griham andukupam vano gatam yad harimasriyata. Very politely, but very cleverly, Prahlad Maharaj said, Oh, best of the demons. And Rani Kasvu was very happy. Ah, ha, ha. <laughs> oh, best of the demons. The best thing that I learned was that this deep, dark well called family life is full of suffering. And the persons in that well, the Asakriha, because of accepting what is temporary and always meditating upon what is temporary, their lives are full of suffering. If we meditate and develop something for, if we develop attachment for something which is temporary, then either we must be separated from that, or that object will be separated from us. Therefore, we'll feel so much anxiety and suffering. Therefore, Prahlad Maharaj said, one who's fallen into this dark well called materialistic life, especially family life, his life is full of suffering because he's always meditating on that which is temporary. Therefore, one should leave everything and take shelter of the forest. That means one must leave household life and take shelter in Vrindavan, especially Yadam Harimasriyeta, and then one can take shelter of the Supreme Lord. Guru Maharaj explains really nicely what is called that dark, deep well. Imagine someone is being chased by a tiger and he's running, running, and he sees a very nice patch of grass, he goes to step on it and he falls in. This is like Guru Maharaj saying, the affection we have for the opposite sex. Like a dry well is covered by grass, it looks nice and soft, but when you step on it, I and you suffer. <laughs> Therefore that man, he fell down the dry well, and after falling, he reached and grasped onto one branch. Then the tiger was looking down, mm, roaring. The man was afraid, he looked down and saw there were many snakes hissing, waiting for him to fall, to finish. That time he was hanging on the branch, what to do, where to go? But the good times are only beginning. Two rats, one black rat and one white rat were chewing on the branch. And also above there was one wasp um, bee's nest. And because he was shaking the bee's nest, hundreds of bees were stinging him in all parts of his body. So he was crying, ah, but he could not go down, could not go up. But in the middle of such a terrible situation, because of the shaking of the branch, some honey was coming and he was... <laughs> Some honey was falling on his tongue, and he was thinking, ah, nectar. <laughs> so Prahlad Maharaj said, this is called material life. Guruji explains, we are just like that. Death is all around us. Like Bharat Maharaj, he completely forgot about his death, but death never forgot about Bharat Maharaj. It says, when we are born, death is born with us. Therefore, our situation is just like that. We are forgetting that any moment we can die. What are rats and That branch, that is one's lifespan. And that is being chewed by a black rat and a white rat. That means day and night. Day and night. Time is taking away our lifespan. In the 11th canto of Bhagavatam, the Navayogendra said, What is knowledge? Knowledge means to see everything in this universe is in the snake, in the mouth of the snake called time. Everything will be destroyed. That vision is called knowledge. So, downwards, the snakes means death. Up was death, he, his, our lifespan is being taken day and night by the rats, and the bees biting us are the millions of miseries we experience. The tax man, the policeman, the next door neighbors, the children, <laughs> all biting, biting, biting. In the middle of such a terrible situation, that time some drop of honey comes, and from that we forget everything. That drop of honey is a momentary satisfaction we feel in sex happiness. 
That five minutes of happiness results unlimited suffering. Well, Guru Maharaj said, we suffer day and night, and we come home, and what happens? The children run up, oh, Baba, how was your day? Give me ten dollars. <laughs> So because of that little bit of happiness we experience, we are so much foolish, we forget our precarious situation in this world and unlimited suffering. Therefore Prahlad Maharaj said, Father, you should leave this miserable family life and take shelter in Vrindavan, the shelter of Sri Hari, that means Sri Krishna. And mainly Hirani Kasipu became, he didn't take it seriously. Ha, he said, thus the kid's intelligence is spoiled by the enemy. Because small words coming from a small boy, Harani Kasabu didn't take it that much seriously. He just laughed. So, that time he returned him to the Gurukul. That time the teachers, Sanda and Amarika, Sanda means darkness, no? Anda. Amarika means one is a bull. Huh? Sanda is a bull. Because a bull is very foolish, even though he eats so much and so, he's so strong, as soon as he sees a cow, he loses all his intelligence and it runs behind him. And Guru Maharaj said, when they pass stool, it's like a jet stream. <laughs> so they have so much, they have no intelligence at all. Therefore, and the other Guru, he was even worse off. He's called Amarika, that means darkness. Because even though he had so much so-called knowledge of the scripture, he could not see the soul or the Supreme Lord Krishna, therefore he was completely blind. So the teachers asked, Oh Prahlad, how do you learn such knowledge? How do you develop attraction to this Vishnu? We never taught you anything like that. That time Prahlad Maharaj said, I cannot explain, but just like a magnet is attracted to iron, in the same way my mind is spontaneously attracted to the pastimes of Sri Hari. So Prahlad Maharaj went back to school, he pr pretended to learn, but he never really took the materialistic instructions of his teachers to his heart. Only he cheated them externally. Next time when he came back to his father, his father gave him another chance. Oh my dear boy, tell me, what was a nice thing you learned in school? That time Prahlad Maharaj said, Sravanam, Kitanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Achanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmanavedanam. Iti Pumsapita Vishnu Bhaktischan Navalakshanam Kriti Bhagati Ada Manite Arta Uttamam. How people want to serve God but they don't know how. If we want to serve Krishna, we should serve him in the correct way. For example, if I ask someone or Guru Maharaj asks someone, can I have an orange juice? And someone brings a beer. This is not fulfilling the desire of the person who should be served, therefore it cannot be called service. Therefore, independent efforts to serve God without direction of the saint and the scriptures is useless. Therefore, how to serve God? Krishna, there is nine ways. Shravanam, hearing. Shravanam, kirtanam, chanting the holy name and repeating the instructions we've heard from the scriptures and the Guru. Vishnu smaranam, always thinking of the Lord. Padasevanam, serving the Lord's feet of the Lord or using our feet in the service of the Lord by doing tours, parikrams of the holy places. Archanam, worshipping the Lord in the temple. Vandanam, offering prayers. Dasyam, becoming the servant of Krishna. Sakyam, becoming the friend of Krishna. And Atmanavedanam. So these are called Navavida Bhakti. Nine ways to serve Krishna. But there's a catch. Iti pum sapita bishno bhaktischa navalakshanam. One must, apitam, one means one must completely offer oneself to who? Vishno. Vishnu in Sanskrit is plural. One must offer oneself to the two gods. And one may become astonished. How there can be two gods? I thought there was only one. Then they'll be fighting amongst each other. Therefore there are two forms of the Supreme Lord in this world. One is, of course, Krishna himself, Visay Vigraha, the Supreme Lord as the enjoyer. And the other form of the Supreme Lord in this world is called Asray Bhagavan, Sevak Bhagavan, or the pure devotee. Therefore, one name we give for the spiritual master is Vishnupad. He is called Vishnupad because he is the direct manifestation of the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord in this world. You cannot go to Krishna directly. One should go to the feet of Krishna in this world, which is Guru Pada Padma. Under the guidance and taking shelter of the spiritual master, one should perform these nine types of seva towards the Supreme Lord Krishna. Prahlad Maharaj said, this is called knowledge. 
Nothing else can be called knowledge. Then he gave, Prahlad Maharaj gave more instructions. <coughs> Matiyana Krishna ordered to kill him, but he could not. Then by the advice of Sandamarki, again Prahlad Maharaj was sent to his school. Thank you. Om Jnana Timirandasya Gyanjana Shalakaya Chakshuru Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Ravina Maha So Sri Prahlad Maharaj he had declared to his father what the topmost uh, activity for the human being is, and that is to do pure bhakti, navavidha bhakti, perform the nine limbs of bhakti to Sri Vishnu. And when Hiranyakashipu heard this suggestion from Prahlad Maharaj, he became very, very infuriated. Because Hiranyakashipu was the greatest, most powerful, demoniac, materialistic person in the entire universe. And his whole goal of life was to enjoy sense gratification. And he wanted that his son will also come in his dynasty and be the same materialistic, fruitive worker uh, with no other goal than to eat, drink, be merry, for tomorrow we die. So, Hiranyakashipu, when he understood that his son had now been completely contaminated, uh, as he thought, by this bogus conception that we should worship Vishnu. Who was Vishnu to Hiranyakashipu? Vishnu was his greatest enemy. Materialistic persons, they consider that God is their greatest enemy. Why? Because they think they are all powerful and they will conquer death, as Hiranyakashipu also thought. We heard in the beginning of the narration that he wanted to become immortal. <clears throat> and in Hiranyakashipu's case, his own brother Hiranyaksha had been killed by Vishnu. And now his son, his little son, is suggesting to him that he should also perform bhakti to Vishnu. So he became very infuriated. And in so many ways, he tried to kill Prahlad Maharaj. This Matirna Krishna came before this. Yes. So, as he was expressing his dissatisfaction to Prahlad Maharaj, Prahlad Maharaj continued to explain his position to his father. And he also tried to enlighten his father. He tried to explain to him, My dear king of the demons, Matirna Krishne Parataksvatova Svatova Mito Bipadye Griha Vratanam Adanta Go Bir Vishatam Tamishram Punak Punak Charvita Charvananam Matirna Krishne Paratak Svatova Oh, if a person is determined in this world that he will be a gross materialistic, materialistic sense enjoyer, then it is never possible for that person to become Krishna conscious. Matirna Krishne, Paratak Svatova. Neither by good instructions from others, neither by his own endeavors, neither by having joint conferences and discussing the subject matter. It is not possible for such a person because Adanta Gobir Vishatam Tamishram. His senses are uncontrolled. Adanta Gobir. And therefore, Vishatam Tamishram, he's descending down to the lowest position in this material world, he's going to hellish suffering. Punak Punak Charavita Charvananam. Again and again, he is attempting to enjoy this material happiness, which is simply like chewing something that has already been chewed and rejected, and again you put it in your mouth and you try to chew it. So Prahlad Maharaj told this to his father, and he told him, 
that the materialistic persons in this world, they don't know what actually is their real Svartagati, their self-interest. Nate vidu Svartagatim hi Vishnum durashaya ye bahirartamani na te pi shudvandva urudhamni badha. He said that the materialistic persons, they don't know that their ultimate Svartagati, self-interest of their soul, is to worship Vishnu to surrender to the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Durashaya ye bahirartamanina. And because they do not understand this fact, they're always situated uh, trying to enjoy this world with great hope. Durashaya. They have this hope that someday I will be able to successfully enjoy in this world. But it is always defeated. And they're... Uh, whole existence is completely bound by these material desires, as if their very uh, hands and arms and legs are being bound by the ropes of the material nature. So how can such a materialistic person in such a predicament escape from this? It is only possible in one way, Prahlad Maharaj told his father. He said, Naisham matistavud urukramangrim spritchartanarto upagamam yadarta mahiyasam padarajo bishekam nishkinchananam navranita yavat. Oh, my dear father, if anyone wants to become free from all these anartas, all these contaminations of material, materialistic tendencies and desires in this world, there is only one way. Mahiyasam padarajo abhishekam. He must take abhishek, he must bathe himself in the padaraja, in the dust from the lotus feet of the pure devotee, nishkinchanana, who has no material desires or attachments in this world and is completely surrendered to the Supreme Lord. When Hiranyakashipu heard the suggestion from Prahlad Maharaj, his eyebrows began to uh, be furled very tightly in a very angry expression. And now he came to his conclusion. He said, just as when a limb of the body becomes diseased and is going to threaten the health of the rest of the body, then that limb must be cut off. Now I can understand that this person, this very low class person, he has become my enemy. He has become contaminated by the enemy. The Vaishnavas, somehow or other, they have contaminated this person. So therefore, I must remove him. I must eliminate him. And, and Hiranyakashipu, now he gave instructions to his servants that you should take this person, this rascal, and you should try to uh, inflict all kinds of weapons and punishment upon him and do away with him for good. So they took him away and they tried many different methods. First of all, they tried to kill him and cut him with swords and sharp knives and weapons, tried to pierce his body. But Sri Prahlad Maharaj, he was a completely surrendered soul. He was completely 100% Sharanagata to the lotus feet of Krishna. And therefore he simply folded his hands and prayed to Krishna. And he was completely peaceful and happy that he was under the loving protection of Krishna. And in that condition, these weapons and everything could not even touch his body at all. They tried then to take Prahlad Maharaj and throw him underneath the feet of an elephant and have him crushed. But when they put him there, Krishna protected him, and he inspired the elephant that he should not step on him, and nothing resulted from that. They took Prahlad, they tried to put him in a pit of snakes, poisonous snakes. And when they put him in there, all the snakes, they did not even try to bite him. Then they took Prahlad and took him up to a huge mountain cliff, and they tried to hurl him off of this mountain cliff. And Prahlad Maharaj sailed down from the top of the mountain, and he landed very safely on the ground. Nothing, no injury. Then they even tried to give him poison, forcing him to drink poison. Prahlad Maharaj very willingly accepted, and he drank the poison. No result. 
Now, after trying every conceivable method, Hiranyakashipu, he became a little bit worried. He began to think, what is this? What kind of power does this son of, so-called son of mine have? There is nothing I can do. And he started to become quite depressed, quite frustrated. And then his teachers, Shanda and Amarka, they assured him, they told him, Oh, our dear king, please, you know, don't worry about the current situation. I'm sure your son is just young. And right now he may be in this mentality. But we, we think that in course of time, he, this will pass. And then he will become normal again. So better that we should take him again and we should try to instruct him. So then Hiranyakashipu, he again agreed, and the two teachers, they brought Prahlad Maharaj to the school where the other sons of the demons, of the demoniac dynasties, they were all in the same school with Prahlad Maharaj. So now Prahlad Maharaj was again going to this school, and the teachers were attempting to teach all the materialistic subject matters that a, <coughs> that a sense enjoyer must know in this world, in order to attain what they consider perfection, simply giving satisfaction to the gross material body. So they taught so many different subjects for some time. And then one day, oh, uh, the teachers had to go out of the room for some reason. And then the children were in the room alone. And at that time, when the teacher went out of the room, naturally what do children usually do? When the cat's away, the mice will play. So now they wanted to play games and they wanted to be frivolous and to enjoy and all of this. But they noticed that Prahlad Maharaj was not interested. Oh, come on, Prahlad, Prahlad, play with us, play with us. And then Prahlad Maharaj, he told them, uh, he began to instruct them that, my dear classmates, uh, this is not the purpose of life. You know that all of us, we are very young right now, only five years old. But how long do we actually have to live in this life? You think that you have a very long period of time, hundred years to live perhaps, but out of that hundred years, already you're going to spend fifty of them sleeping, wasting the entire half of your life. And then out of that other half, fifty years, you may, you're going to spend ten years in your frivolous childhood. <clears throat> then you're going to spend another ten years uh, doing some kind of study so that you can have an occupation. And then another 10 years of your life will be spent at the end of your life in old age where your body is racked with pains and problems and diseases and you cannot do proper bhajan. So actually how much time do you really have in this human form of life? Maybe you have 10 or 20 years in which you can do bhajan. So therefore, komaram acharit pragya, dharman bhagavatan iha, durlabha manusam janma, tadapyap artadam. That this human form of life is durlabha janma. It is very rare to attain this human form of life after millions and millions of lifetimes in this material world, wandering from one species to another, finally attaining the human form. It is not to be wasted. Therefore, from the time of Komara, five years old, you must begin this process. Don't waste any time. Komara Acharit Pragya Dharman Bhagavataniha. Bhagavat Dharma. Service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead must begin now. Otherwise, your human life may be wasted. And in this way, Prahlad Maharaj began to instruct his friends. And they wondered, Prahlad, how do you know all this wonderful knowledge? Thank you. Very good. Tonga Gyana Timidan has a Gananjana Salakaya, Chakshurun Militan Yena Tasma is the Gurave Namaha. So, all of you are listening. The life history and teachings of Prahlad Maharaj. And the demonic friend of Prahlad Maharaj asked Prahlad, Oh Prahlad, 
From where you have learned all these things? Our teacher, Sondan Amarka, never taught all these things. Only they taught us how our ultimate goal is to make money. Money is money brighter than sun sunny, tester than sweet honey. <laughs> if you have learned money, then you will be cunny. So you have learned all these things. From where you have learned all these things? Ask me to do bhajan. Then Prahlad Maharaj told his, the life history of his mother, when he was in the womb of his mother, and he learned everything, being the womb of his mother, in the ashram of Narad Rishi. Then the demonic friend asked, O oh, Prahlad Maharaj, O oh, Prahlad, can you teach us how we can do bhajan? What is the simplest method to do bhajan? You are in your mother's womb 60,000 years. Not possible for us to do so much austerity. Please tell us the simple way. What is the simple way? Then Prahlad Mahai replied, Guru Sushru Saya Bhakta Sarvala Bharpane Nacha Sangyana Sadhu Bhakta Namishwara Radhane Nacha Prahlad Mahai told, Please listen carefully. Guru Sushru Saya Bhakta You have to serve your Guru Dev how? With great devotion. If you have not served your Guru Dev with great devotion, that's not possible at all. Just like as before you have heard from Sri Pada Damodar Maharaj, that there are two Bhagavan, one Ashtar Bhagavan, another Vishar Bhagavan. Although our ultimate goal to serve Vishar Bhagavan, but there is one condition, what? Have to go through proper channel, have to be initiated by a bona fide Guru Dev. So Guru Sushru Saya Bhakta, later on, in this Kali Yuga, our Srila Das Goswami Pada told, in Mano Siksha, Guru Goshthe Gasthala Isu, in this work he first also narrated about Guru's name, not to Krishna at first. So every year, about Guru, Guru must be bona fide Guru. So Guru Sushru Saya Bhakta, Morobhar Sarva Lalharupa Nena Cha, Whatever you gain, have to offer to Guru Dev. Now you think, oh, if I offer to Guru Dev, then how I can maintain my life? So, what to do? Prabhupada tell you, no, we must have to offer. What we have? What we possess? This body and mind, and related to body and mind. So, our Acharya is told, Manasa, Deha, Deha, Jo Kichu Mor, or pilu tua pade nanda kisor. Oh nanda kisor, which I possessed by my by bo body, by mind, everything I offer to you. Then what will be the result? Dai momo galatua upada barane. If you do so, if you surrender completely the lotus feet of Sila Guru Dev, then you have no more responsibility. Then Krishna will be bound to bestow his mercy. It mentioned in the scriptures in Adi Puran that if you serve Krishna direct, Siddhir Bhavati Vaneti Sansar Achyuta Sevinam Nishan Sarastu Tadbhakta Paricharjar Atatmanam. If you serve Krishna direct, you may get perfection or not. There is a lot of doubt. But if you serve this great devotee, Guru Pahar Padma, then perfection under your hand, inside your palm. None can check this. So Guru Sushtru Saya Bhakta Sarvala Bharpani Nacha. Moreover, Sangyana Sadhu Bhakta Nam Isra Radhani Nacha. How you can understand? Is a bona fide guru or not? Then what to do? You must have to go through Vaishnavas. Vaishnav will tell you he is bona fide guru or not. Because it mentioned in scriptures, before initiation, Guru will examine his disciple for one year. And disciple also examine his guru one year. Guru can examine his disciple in a moment, but for disciple, not possible to judge his guru perfect or not. How to do? Have to go to proper channel, have to go to Vaishnavas. The Sangyana Sadhu Bhaktanam, Vaishnava will tell you that he is bona fide guru or not. What is the symptom of bona fide guru then? Thus, why will you offer to him? Tasmar Guru Prabhadeta. Jigansu se uttamam sabde paricha nisnatam brahmanupa samasrayam. Who is bona fide guru there? There is two symptoms. One primary symptom, another secondary symptom. 
to very hard to understand the primary symptom. For the secondary symptom, sabde paricha nishnatam, he must be qualified, sabde cha nishnatam, must be qualified all scriptures. If devotee has a doubt, he can flush out by quoted from scripture. Oh, you can contact me, I will reply you in six months. Not like this. He has questioned, this devotee has questioned a disciple. Guru Padma can immediately remove the doubt. And Brahma Rupa Samasvayam and must be detached from material world. This material world may be male or female, both are hankering for different ways. For male, they are hankering for three W, omen, wife and wine. And female, men, marijuana and money. <laughs> it's good like this, this is the Gula Fat Guru Dev. He must be tell this. So, and primary symptom, Parejo Nishnatam, he must be a realized soul. See, sitting with us, what is doing, how we can understand? In Guru Gati Krishna Nandaya Dhimahi, being with us, same time he is serving Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Krishna Nandaya means Sri Krishna Chaitanya, same time serving Sri Krishna, and same time Sri Krishna Nandaya, Krishna plus Anandaya, Krishna Nandaya. Same time serving them, then how disciple can judge his Bunafet Guru or not? So you have to go, Vasna Vas. Sangyana Sadhu Bhaktanam Isharara Dhani Nacha. Then only proper Isharara Dhana, proper Bhajan. Hearing this, all his friends become influenced and they start Kirtan. When they are doing Kirtan, all this sound vibration of the Kirtan went to Hiranyakasipu. Hiranyakasipu became very furious. Oh, what is going on? He came from the, his own palace and came to Gurukul and threatened Hiranyakasipu from Chandanamarka. What is going on? Nonsense thing here. Chandanamarka told, Oh, Maharaj, we could not check for love. He spoiled himself and spoiled the whole our school boys. Then he said, Oh, Prahlad, why are you getting this power? Prahlad come and quiet reply, Oh, my dear father, from where are you getting your power? I am getting from same source. Why is your Bhagavan? Always you telling this new Vishnu? Prahlad my reply, Everywhere. Where is not? No help that there is no place that has business not there, is all providing. Where is this? In this pillar, in this year, yes, Ma Pita, yes, Father, he is here, there, everywhere. Then how I cannot see him? Then Prahlad Mahai told, Andha Pita Sujata Nahi, Hamme Tumme Khamba Khalka Me Jahi Khujata Hiram. Oh, my dear friend, Father, you are spiritually blind, so you could not find him. So, what to say about here and there? Is inside you, inside me, inside this pillar, even inside your soul, everywhere. Really? Okay. Then he very strongly hit the pillar. Immediately the one rolling sound came. <laughs> Neither man or not any man. Because he had benediction from Brahmaji. He will not be killed by any creature created by him. So Nishin of it, not created by Brahmaji. And he came and there is some battle with, between Hiranyakasipu and Nishin of it. When Nishin of it grabbed him, all the members began to laugh, clap, oh, now we are safe, we are safe. And sometimes Nishin of it make him some loose. Then all the members, Allah, 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 used to do that. After the Hidna Kush, Nishina was completely grabbed by Nishina there and he tore by his, by his nose, nails and take the intestine, put on his neck like a garland. The Brahmaji gave him benediction, he will not die either day or night. 
Charge your time either day, not night, you are dust time. Not only weapons by nails, not only month, it was Purusatta month, not only year, it was leap year, not created by Brahma, so Nishimada is Bhagavan. So fulfilling all the benediction of Brahmaji and he killed Hiranakasipu. After that, he is so furious, like his mad. His main thing is to go and touch the sky. The flame is coming from that. Then Brahmaji and other demigods, they request to Lakshmi Devi. Oh Lakshmi Devi, please go and satisfy your Prabhu. They say, oh my goodness, I never seen this strange. I cannot go to him. I cannot satisfy him. I never see his form like this. Lakshmi Devi, run away. Brahmaji deny to go. All the demigods deny to go. Then Brahma told, Oh dear Prahla, give to yourself, your Prabhu has appeared here. Please go and satisfy him. Prahla Maharaj is very calm and quiet. He has no fear at all. Just like one lion killed an elephant and every year full of blood. When he came back to his cave, his cow jumped on his neck and lion moved his tail and very calm and quiet not make any harm for this baby. In the same way, Prahlad Maharaj went and took seat on his lap of him, Nishinadev, and Nishinadev caressing him and told Prahlad, please excuse me, I became late. So, please ask some benediction. Prahlad Maharaj told, I am not a businessman. I don't want to do any trade with you. That I worship you. I do your bhajan. I have to take benediction. I don't want. If I have a desire to for benediction, please remove this desire. Nishantar said, no. I, my darshan is infallible. Please ask benediction. Then Prahlad Maharaj told, My father done so many mischief for you. Please excuse him. Then Nishantar told, Your father has been delivered already. If any Vaisna, Uttam Vaisna, come any dynasty, then is 21 generation delivered. If Madhvam Vaishnava, then 14th generation. If Kanishtha Vaishnava, then 7th generation. So your father already delivered from this world. Don't worry. Please ask any other benediction. And Prahlad Maharaj told, Oh Prabhu, if you want to give, really give the benediction, I want only one benediction. The worldly people, being in this material world, forget you completely. They are suffering so many ways. I want to take the sufferings, and I want to suffer life after life after life. And if I do any sukriti or good thing for you, please deliver them from this world. Here Nagasibu told, Oh Prahlad, you are winner, I am loser. I could not defeat you. But it is not possible. But yes, I am giving this benediction. Whoever discuss dialogue between yourself and myself, they must be delivered from this world, there is no doubt. By this way, Prahlad Maharaj get this benediction. So our Parapar Gurudev, Sila Bhakti Siddhanta Swati Goswami Thakur Prabhupada, he read this and give class more than 108 times. Why? Because Nishwadev gave this benediction. So, as in beginning of class, Sila Gurudev has quoted this also. So we have to follow Prahlad Maharaj, be tolerant like Prahlad Maharaj, then we can advance in Krishna consciousness gradually. Like Sanatana Goswami Pad has given example in Priyad Bhagavata Amritam, Gyani Bhakta Prahlad Maharaj, after that Suddha Bhakta Ambarish Maharaj, after that Premi Bhakta Hanumanji, after that Prematur Bhakta, Prempar Bhakta Pandavas, and Prematur Bhakta Uddhavas, and Uddhav is praying to Braj Gopis, Asamo, Charan, and Isamo, and Sam. And one that is desired will come to Sad Gopis, under guidance of Guru Pahad Padma, and Vaishnava, Hare Krishna. Pancha Agar Bhakari Bhakta Kipasi Kipasi Kipasi, Everybody over here can feel everybody's free to come. Whole now the fundraiser going on. Also, there are some DVDs of Shula Gurudev's movies back there too. Also, there's a limited edition of these G Clays too. So. Also, Srimati Shamarani Didi, as she has done in some of our other festivals, on Monday 
in the late morning class, 10.30 a.m. class. She's going to be presenting a very, very interesting slideshow of all the art, telling so much of the history, how these uh, dozens and dozens of paintings were made by her under the direction of Srila Prabhupada and under the direction of Srila Gurudev. And there will also be a chance at that time for purchasing these original paintings, G. Clays. Hare Krishna. Gaur Pramanandi Hari 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 Go Krishna Govindi Govindi Gopala Krishna Govindi Govindi Gopala Krishna Govindi